also want to say good afternoon to all of the rest of the people that are watching on the internet. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, it's been a rough week for me, sisters and brother. You know, Israel gets real crazy sometimes. And uh, ain't gonna lie, sometimes I want to just run away. Oh, this is a hard people to deal with. <laughs> too many personalities. Too many emotions. And I'm going to say, I really had to pray to the Lord for strength. Because uh, sometime, from some of the stuff that go on in Israel and some of the behavior, I wonder if anybody's listening. And that's the truth. But still, it's a lot that I got to deal with, so I can't run away from it. So we're going to deal with this lesson. This lesson is titled, Jesus in His Temple, Some Saints and Their Job. Jesus in His Temple, Some Saints and Their Job. Because, sisters and brothers, this whole thing is going to take place on the earth. And right now, what we're dealing with is we are being developed to take care of the Lord's business. We are being developed not only to become God, but to help God raise up a righteous generation. And the Lord's going to come and sit up on this earth, and he is going to run this earth from the throne of David. And he is not going to run it by himself. He's going to have help from some of his saints, all of those that are in the first resurrection. We can't name all people in all jobs, but I just want to name a few jobs that, that has already been passed out. Some people knew what they was going to do in God's kingdom before they died. So we're going to deal with it. First, we're going to Deal with the Lord coming to his temple. Let's go into Malachi, the third chapter. <clears throat> Malachi, chapter 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Malachi, chapter 3, and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, uh -huh. and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant. See, see the Lord sent a messenger in the, in, the, in the day when he sent John the Baptist, sisters and brothers. But contrary to some people, I'm sure, I know that he's, going, he's also sending messengers to warn the people to try to turn them back to the Lord. But the big thing is, he is going to come to his temple. Go ahead and read. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Go ahead. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. He's going to come. He's going to suddenly come to his temple. Go ahead and read. But who may abide the day of his coming? See, this is what I'm saying. Who will abide, may abide the day of his coming? Because it's not going to be as people think. The Lord's going to come and he's going to do a lot of damage. So who may abide the day of his coming? Go ahead. And who shall stand when he appeareth? Uh-huh. For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. I mean, a refiner's fire, that means it burns all of the filth out of the oil. And full of soap, wash all the dirt off. When he get through, this earth is going to be clean, sister and brother. But he said, but he's going to suddenly come to his temple. What temple? Let's go in and see. Let's go into Revelation, the 11th chapter. Revelation chapter 11. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. <clears throat> Revelation <clears throat> chapter 11 and verse 1. Because, sister and brother, stuff like this has never been, nobody pays attention to it. Because nobody teaches the word of God. They teaches you what they think. But sooner or later, somebody have to read this Bible. 11 and 1, go ahead. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Uh -huh. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God. Rise and, and measure the temple of God. Go ahead and read. And the altar and them that worship therein. Uh -huh. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. Go ahead. And measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 
40 in two months. So now this temple system, brother, that he said, measure in the oath that worship this is the temple that the Lord's going to set in. But in the court, we are the temple. He's going to give that to the Gentile. That is what the people over there in Jerusalem going to build a temple in that area, in the courtway. The Lord didn't even want that temple on the same spot that he was going to be. So the temple that we said right here, the measure it and the people that are in it, that is a future temple. Not the one that's going to be built by the people over there now, but the one that's going to be built, we're going to show you who in this lesson, by immortals. So now let's go and look at this temple. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 20th, uh, 40th chapter. Ezekiel, the 40th chapter. This temple, sisters and brothers, is what is to come and is not the one that's going to be built in our time. And I mean real soon in our time. This thing is right up on us, sisters and brothers. Ezekiel chapter 20, 40 rather, Ezekiel chapter 40, and we're going to start reading at one, verse 1. Ezekiel 40 and verse 1. Ezekiel 40 and verse 1. Okay, read it. In the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, uh -huh. in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, Go ahead. in the 14th year after that, the city was smitten. In the selfsame day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. See, now Ezekiel wrote this while he was in captivity among the Babylonian sisters and brothers. So the Lord came to him while he was in captive and he showed and he, and he showed him and he, he said, look, I saw this in the day that Jerusalem was destroyed. Go ahead and read. In the visions of God <laughs> brought he me into the land of Israel. Go ahead. And set me upon a very high mountain. Uh-huh. By which was as the frame of a city on the south. Now he's showing them this city of the future, sisters and brothers. It's not the old one. Because the Babylonians had destroyed that. So this is all future we're dealing with. Go ahead and read. And he brought me thither. And behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass uh -huh. with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. Now, he, just like, just like uh, John saw this guy with this measuring reed in his hand, Ezekiel saw the same one, for they're going to measure the same temple. Go ahead and read. And the man said unto me, Son of man, uh -huh. behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. Go ahead. For to the intent that I may show them unto thee art thou brought hither. Uh-huh. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. He said, I, I brought you here to show you the future temple. And I want you to declare all of this to the house of Israel. Because I want them to know what is to come. Go ahead and read. And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about. Uh -huh. And in the man's hand, a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit and a hand breadth. Uh -huh. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Uh huh. And so he started to, he started to measure the building, sisters and brothers. But we're not going to get into all of it because we'll be here all day in one chapter. So let's go to Ezekiel, the 41st chapter. Ezekiel chapter 41. <clears throat> and we're going to read verse 1, 41 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Afterward he brought me to the temple <clears throat> and measured the posts, six cubits broad on the one side and six cubits broad on the other side, go ahead. which was the breadth of the tabernacle. <clears throat> so now he measured the tabernacle. Now let's go into Ezekiel the 43rd chapter. You don't have to bear with me a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know where this cough come from, but uh, we're going to work through it. <clears throat> Ezekiel 43, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Ezekiel 43 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. Now the Lord didn't come. He didn't see the Lord coming down from heaven. He came by way of the east, through the eastern gate, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And his voice was like a noise of many waters. Uh-huh. And the earth shined with his glory. That means he was here. See, what people don't understand is Jesus is not going to go directly to Jerusalem. 
He's going to go to the wilderness. And when he come up, when he get through doing his ministry in the wilderness, which he's going to have to do for three and a half years, the last half of his week that he have to teach, he's going to come into the land of Jerusalem. And he's going to come the same way that Israel came into the land, by way of the east. Skip now to verse uh, uh, 4 and go ahead. Verse 4 and go ahead. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So when he came through that eastern gate, he went into the house. This is the temple that's built. And we're going to show you who built this temple. But go ahead and read. So the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. Uh -huh. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Go ahead. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. Uh -huh. And the man stood by me. Now Ezekiel heard the Lord speaking to him. The Lord spoke to Ezekiel out of the house. Now remember, this is all future here, even beyond our time. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me, Son of man. Son of man. The place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. The place of, the, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. Go ahead and read. Where I would dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Uh-huh. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Uh-huh. Neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. He says, now look, this is the throne of my, the soles of my feet. And this is the throne that I'm going to set on where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Because this is what Jesus is going to come, sisters and brothers. He's going to dwell in the midst of Israel. He ain't interested in taking you off to heaven. He is coming here. He said, I'm going to dwell in the midst of Israel forever. But the thing he said, the, uh, 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 the place of my throne. What throne? Let's go and see what throne. Let's go into Luke, the first chapter. When the Lord tells you something, you don't have to interpret. All you got to do is go and read the Bible, sister and brother. He says, this is the place of, the throne, of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Then we're going to start this in Luke, the first chapter, and verse 26. Luke 1 and verse 26. Okay, read it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Uh huh. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Go ahead. Of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now, the angel Gabriel. He was sent to give Mary a message. Go let her know that she's going to have a, a son, even a holy son. This is the message. Skip down to verse 30. Verse 30 and go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb uh -huh. and bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, and call his name Jesus. Jesus. This is what the name that come from heaven, sisters and brothers. People always saying, well, there ain't no J in the Hebrew language and the J didn't come up, blah, blah, blah. I tell you, you can't speak God. It's all that simple. And the Bible tell me in Revelation 20th chapter that the books was open and you're going to be judged by the things that are written in this book. So if I'm going to be judged by the thing that's written in this book, I'm going to lay with the thing that's written in this book. Instead of somebody telling me what, and they ain't 100 years old. You just learn how to speak English, and all of a sudden you become a great linguistic. <laughs> the Bible says you can call his name Jesus, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead and read. He shall be great. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. Go ahead. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Go ahead. And he shall reign forever over the house of Jacob and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Look, the house of Jacob is Israel, sisters and brothers. So now, if he's going to sit on David's throne, then he's going to rule over the same people that David ruled over. And that was Israel. It's all that simple. The sisters and brothers, but why did he come by way of the gate of the east, the east gate, and still have said, he just come from heaven and went into his temple? Because he's not coming directly to Jerusalem. Let's go into Isaiah, the 16th chapter. Isaiah chapter 16. 
Because a lot of brothers, sisters, and brothers, that the Lord, that the Lord going to bring them back, the Lord said he's going to bring every Israelite back no matter where he is. But that don't mean you're going to get into the land. Because some of them same attitudes that I've been dealing with inside the Israel of God, you got some just as worse outside the Israel of God. And if those attitudes don't change, they ain't going nowhere but to the ground. And when he wake you up, he's going to put you in the fire. It's all that simple, sister and brother. Now, this is why the Lord came by way of the east instead of by heaven. Isaiah 16 and verse 1. Isaiah 16 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Send ye the lamb to the rule of the land from Selah to the wilderness. From the rock to the wilderness. Go ahead. Unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. Unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. Because that's where the people are going to be, sisters and brothers. They're going to be in the wilderness. Read verse 5. And, and in, go ahead. And in mercy shall the throne be established. Uh-huh. And he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David. Uh-huh. Judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. The same is coincide with what the angel told Mary. He's going to sit on David's throne. But, and he's going to judge and seek judgment. But before anybody go into the land, he got to go through the wilderness. Because that's why I said, send ye lamb from the rock to the wilderness, sisters and brothers. Why? Let's go into Ezekiel the 20th chapter now. Ezekiel chapter 20. We're just simply teaching the word of God, sisters and brothers. And that's all we need to do. We, don't have to, we, have, we need to suspense with the dramatics and all this. We're just going to teach this word. If the word is not good enough for you, the dramatics ain't going to save you. That's right. It's all that simple. That's right. Ezekiel 20, and we're going to start at verse 32. Because first the Lord has to tell his people, you ain't going to be like everybody. 20 and verse 32. Ezekiel 20 and verse 32. Go ahead and read. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. Go ahead. That ye shall say, we will be as a heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. The Lord said, look, what you thinking in your mind, you're going to keep dealing with this paganism and this pagan God like the rest of the nation? He said, uh-uh. I'm going to deal with you. Go ahead and read. As I live, said the Lord God, surely with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm uh -huh. and with fury poured out, Will I rule over you? He said, with, with great uh, uh, drama, I'm going to bring on you. Fear report out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rule over you. That's what he's telling Israel. Because these people ain't never wanted the Lord to rule over. <laughs> In the days of Samuel, the Lord done whooped all the enemies down. And they turned around and told Samuel, we want a king over us that we can see like all the rest of the nations. And when Samuel got upset, Lord told Samuel, don't get upset. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. I was their king. Now he's telling you, look here. I don't care what you think, what your father think, or what they did. I'm going to rule over you with a stretched out arm and with fear pulled out. Go ahead and read. 34. And I will bring you out from the people uh -huh. and will gather you out of the countries I'm, where you are scattered. I'm going to bring you out from the people and gather you from the country. That's all countries. Wherever Israel is scattered, the Lord is going to bring them back. Go ahead and read. With the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. I'm going to do it with great drama. I'm going to do a lot of damage, but I am bringing you back. Go ahead and read. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And I'm going to take you directly into the land. No. Then said it. I'm going to bring you into the wilderness of the people. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. And I'm going to plead with you face to face. Go ahead. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. I'm going to do the same thing I did with you when I brought Israel out of Egypt. I'm going to be there. He was in the clouds in, in the day, uh, daytime and the pillar of fire at night. The Lord was there. And when he wanted to talk to Talked to Moses or Israel, he went out into the tabernacle, the tent, and Moses said when he went in there, he heard the voice of the God speaking from above the mercy seat in between the cherub angel. And that's why he gave Israel the instruction. He said, so you, I'm going to plead with you face to face because he's going to be here in the wilderness like as I did with your fathers in the land of Egypt. Go ahead and read. So will I plead what you said, the Lord God. I'm going to plead with you the same way. Go ahead and read. 
And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Uh -huh. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I'm going to whip your head. And I'm going to bring you into the bond of the covenant. See, because the covenant bounds you, sisters and brothers. God required that you enter into a covenant with him. And you have the uh, words of the covenant. And the rules of the covenant that binds you. Lord said, I'm going to give you this. But what you got to do, thou shall not steal. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. And on and on and on. Don't have no other God before me. You are bound by the words of the covenant. So I'm going to bring you into the wilderness. I'm going to cause you to pass on the rod. I'm going to bring you into the bound, into the bond of the covenant. Bond means you are tied. That's why Paul used the word all the time, prisoner for Christ. Because mm -hmm. you are tied down by the law. If you expect to get what the, Lord, what the Lord promised you. But go ahead and read. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And this is what I want the brothers to understand. In Israel of God and outside of Israel of God and all these Hebrews. Listen to this. I will purge out from among you the rebels. Go ahead and read. And them that transgress against me. And them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. I'm going to bring you from every country that you sojourn. I ain't going to leave one of you. Go ahead and read. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Uh-huh. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So now that's the big kick in the head, sister and brother. I'm going to gather you from all the countries where I done sent you. I know where every one of you, you are. Moses told you in Deuteronomy the 30th chapter, so I'm going to deliver you if you be in the outmost part of heaven, which he's talking about earth, the first earth, the first heaven, which is earth. And from this, I'm going to deliver you. He told you that in Matthew the 24th chapter. He going to, if you were scattered, even in the outmost place of earth, uttermost place of earth, from this, I'm going to deliver you. And he's going to bring you all the way to Jerusalem. You're going to be dancing and happy with your cape on and your yarmulkes on and your fringes on. And you're going to get killed in the wilderness if the Lord said, take that stuff off. <laughs> Look here, J.C., I got an issue with that. Angel, boop, off, go to head. Next. <laughs> he ain't going to play around with you, sister and brother. He purged Israel in the wilderness when he brought them out of Egypt. And everyone that rebelled against him now, everyone from 20 years and older was killed in the wilderness. Except for Joshua and Caleb. Everyone. So this is going to be the big kicker. Yeah, you Israel. Glory in being Israel. But you better glory more in keeping the Lord's law and coming into the covenant. And getting baptized in the name of, the Je of Jesus so he can wash away your sin. You understand? Because this is what people don't understand. People think that we are real cruel by saying we don't allow brothers to wear fringes in here. You know why we don't, why we don't allow it? Because when you say you're wearing the fringes, you are not under the new covenant. Because the Lord said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. I'm going to write my laws in their mind and record them in their inward part. Jeremiah 31st and Hebrew 8. He's under the new covenant. So now if you are under the fringes, you aren't wearing the fringes, then you may as well kill the animals because you are under the old covenant and you are not covered by the blood of Jesus. This is why, sisters and brothers, not that we mean, not that we're trying to be so correct, it's just that we are doing what the watchman's supposed to do, save you from yourself. Know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. So we're going to bring into the morning of the covenant. In the wilderness. And you don't necessarily, according to what we just read, have to get out of the wilderness. If he purge you, he gonna, you're going to die then and there. After have, you done came by boat. You done came by plane. Some of them took, there's, over on the continent, on the European and Af African continent, they can walk because they connect it. Walk miles to get in the wilderness. And I said, wait a minute, I ain't going to live with no J. <laughs> that stands for Zeus. Look here, JC. 
You are dead, sister and brother. He ain't going for that. He did it in the beginning. And he's going to do it in the end. But you will go to the wilderness. Let's go into Jose, the second chapter. See, people think that we're just doing something. We don't do nothing to do nothing. I don't, like I say all the time, I don't have no dog in this fight. I will do whatever's written in this book. And if it's not written in the book, I won't do it. And everything is dictated by the Lord, not by us. Hosea 2 and verse 14. Because Israel is, is, is the Lord's wife. He's going to remarry <clears throat> Israel, but we his old wife. And he's going to bring us into the wilderness. Hosea 2 and verse 14. 2 and 14. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably into her. I'm going to lure her and I will bring her into the wilderness and I will speak comfortably to her because he's trying to get his wife back in order. Go ahead and read. And I will give her her vineyards from this uh -huh. in the valley of Achor for a door of hope. Go ahead. Now, she, you know, that's when they call it valley of Achor. That's why he stoned that guy that's that stole something from Jer Jericho. Ain't you? So he's going to take you through the same area. You're going to go to the exact same place that your fathers went. And I'm going to give you the valley of Achor for a door. Go ahead and read. And she shall sing there. Uh huh. As in the days of her youth. Uh huh. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Because it's going to be great and happiness. Whole lot of singing and rejoicing. Just like it was when we came out of Egypt. That's after he get rid of them rebels now. Everybody else is going to be happy. You understand? Go ahead and read. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai. Uh huh. And shall call me no more Bela. Now, Ishai means my husband. That's what Israel is going to call the, uh, uh, the Lord then. My husband, because he's going to remarry Israel. Go ahead and read. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth. Go ahead. And there should no more be remembered by their name. Go ahead. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beast of the field. Go ahead. And with the fowls of heaven. Go ahead. And with the creeping things of the ground. Uh-huh. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. And will make them to lie down safely. Now, he's going to make a covenant with the animals with us. Just like it was in the days of Adam, sister and brother. Beasts are not going to attack beasts. Beasts are not going to attack man. Snakes are not going to bite you. That's why a child shall, shall play in a, in a viper's den. Snakes ain't going to bite nobody. The lion going to eat strong. The lion going to eat strong like the ox. The bear and the lamb going to play together and the bear is not going to attack your lamb because he's going to make a covenant with the animals. Animals are not going to eat meat anymore. They're going to go back to what they used to eat in the days of Adam. Fruit and, and herbs and vegetables. Go ahead and read. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. That betroth, that means marry, betroth means promise in marriage, but this here means he's going to marry you, sister and brother. Forever? Go ahead and read. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness. Go ahead. And in judgment. Go ahead. And in loving kindness. Uh -huh. And in mercy. Now, the Lord going to practice all that. See, the Lord like this. Sometimes we should pay attention to some of this stuff, sister and brother. We in righteousness, in judgment, in loving kindness, and in meekness. Israel act like it is a sin to be meek. He even shows up in our teaching sometimes. We want to teach mean and ugly. Look at here. The Lord said, be me. Be nice. What's wrong with a smooth tone sometimes? That's how the Lord is going to do it. That's why I say going to bring her into the wilderness and he's going to speak comfortably to her. Go ahead and read. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. Uh-huh. And thou shalt know the Lord. Then you're going to know me. Skip down to verse 23 and go ahead. And I will sow her unto me in the earth. Uh huh. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. Go ahead. And I will say to them that were not, were not my people, thou art my people. Because you have married me again. Why? Through what? Through the covenant. So the, we are not, he said, those that are, because he has said earlier that look, I want you to tell your mama she ain't my wife no more. But he's going to remarry Israel. And he's going to do it in faithfulness. 
He gonna do it in mercy. And we, that wasn't his people, gonna be his people, and he is going to be our God again. You finish that? And thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. This is going to take place in the wilderness. Now, once the Lord get this woman the way he want her, then he's going to come up out of the wilderness, and then he's going to the land and going to go through that east gate. Let's go into Songs of Solomon, the eighth chapter. Songs of Solomon, chapter eight. And we're going to start at verse 1. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 1. Because these things, sisters and brothers, the Lord is letting you know how he's going to do things. He's going to take it to the wilderness. He's going to speak comfortably to her. He's going to bring everybody into the bounds of the covenant. And you will be married to the Lord again. And once he do this, this is the first a phase of marriage, sisters and brothers, because it's going to take forward. It ain't going to end up until the Lord is through with it at the white throne judgment. That's going to complete the marriage because he's going to bring everybody under the banner of Israel. And there ain't going to be no more national name. Everybody's going to have the last name Israel. But now, we're talking wilderness here. Verse 1, Songs of Solomon, the eight. Chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 8 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that thou wert as my brother that uh, sucked the breast of my mother. He is a brother. Because Jesus, when he wasn't the man child that the woman brought forth. So he's not only our brother, but he's going to be our husband. That, that, uh, that do what now? Read it again. Oh, that thou wert as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. Uh-huh. When I should find thee without... I will kiss thee. Uh-huh. Yeah, I should not be despised. Go ahead. I will lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. I will bring, lead and bring you into my mother's house. Who is our mother's house, sister and brother? Where is it? Israel. That is our house. Somebody's in it right now. But that is our house. That's our mother's house. Go ahead and read. Who would... Who would instruct me? Go ahead. I will cause thee to drink a spice wine of uh, the juice of my pomegranate. I'm going to cause you to have the best of everything. And skip now to verse 5. And look what it says now. Go ahead. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness? Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness? Leaning upon her beloved. Leaning upon her beloved. It is Israel. Leaning upon Jesus. That's our beloved sister and brother. Because this is a love story between Jesus and his people. Finish that. I raised thee up under the apple tree, uh -huh. and there thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bear thee. Now, we're going to come forth, sisters and brothers, out of the wilderness, because the Lord is going to bring us up out of the wilderness, sisters and brothers. And that's why we should be careful of how we deal with this word right now, sisters and brothers, because if you don't, you're going to get purged if you end up in the wilderness. Because this is uh, because this is after now the first resurrection. Because the Lord's going to be here. Now you have to ask the question is, if the Lord have the people hemmed up in the wilderness for three and a half years before he come up out of there with them, who built the temple? Because we read in Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter, didn't he come up through that east gate? That's right. And he went into the house? So who built it? Let's go back and get a little background and we will find out who built it. Let's go into Ezra, the first chapter. Ezra, the first chapter. So when the Lord said, when you see the Lord doing something, then you, he will tell you how he did it, why he did it, and what he did before he did it. Ezra, chapter 1. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Ezra chapter 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Uh -huh. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom 
and put it also in writing, saying, So I'll let you know that the Lord used anywhere, anybody, no matter who you are, whether you're a stranger or Israel. And he uh, made uh, uh, Cyrus make a proclamation and put it in writing, saying, go ahead and read. Thus said Cyrus, uh -huh. king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. Now this guy knew it. He knew that God gave this to him, sister and brother. Because the Lord called this guy. Isaiah, the 45th chapter, talks about this guy. He said, look, he have made me, he have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. Go ahead and read. And he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Uh-huh. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Uh-huh. And build the house of the Lord God of Israel. Uh -huh. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. So he said, now who among these people? Because Cyrus knew that if anybody going to build a Lord's house, it had to be done by an Israelite. Who among his people going to go up and do this, sisters and brothers? Who among his people? So the elders stood up. Skip, skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and read it. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites. That's why, sisters and brothers, Benjamin, Levi, and Judah are among the Gentiles. The rest of them are scattered among Ham, Ham and other, uh, uh, other places. But Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. Remember when the Lord split the nation after Solomon's uh, uh, death, he gave him Judah and Benjamin stayed with him. And then Jeroboam, the Ephraimite, fired the Levites, so they went back to Judah. So they've all been together. So the elders of Judah... Benjamin and the Levites, go ahead and read. With all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So now, he raised the spirit of these people to go up. Now let's go into Ezra, the second chapter. Ezra chapter 2, and they started their journey. 2 and 1, go ahead and read. Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those which had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away Go ahead. into Babylon. Because he's letting you know that Nebuchadnezzar took down the last kingmanship we had. After him, we have gone from nation to nation. But go ahead and read. And came again into Jerusalem and Judah, every one into his city. Everybody knew who he was from, where he was from. Go ahead and read. Which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Realeah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpah, Bigvay, Rehum, Beana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. So now these people that came, they were led by Zerubbabel and, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, Joshua. They spelled it wrong, but it's Joshua, not Joshua. That was, that was the uh, uh, squire for Moses. You understand? This is a new one here. This is the high priest, sister and brother. But the main one, it was led by Zerubbabel. And let's see how many it was that he brought. Let's skip down to verse 64. How many that Cyrus let go? Verse 64. Go ahead and read. The whole congregation together was 40 and 2,303 score. So they let, so 42,300 and 60 people that they let go. Now, history have this also, not the exact number, but I think it's close enough to let me know that this is for real. Now, we're going to read the Encyclopedia, the Grolia Encyclopedia, Volume 3. Grolia Encyclopedia, Volume 3, page 380. Go ahead and read. Cyrus the Great, reigned 550 to 530 B.C., founder of the Persian Empire, son of Cambyses the first, uh -huh. ascending the throne of Amshan in 559. Now the whole world didn't know that God was working with this guy. You understand? This is the same Cyrus. Go ahead and read. Cyrus in 550 overthrew the Median king Astages in battle, uh -huh. assumed the throne of Media and established a capital at Ecbatana. Go ahead. He then ruled Assyria, northern Mesopotamia, Syria, Armenia, and Cappadocia. In 547, he conquered Lydia from Croatia uh -huh. and subdued the Greek cities of the Asian minor coast. Go ahead. 
as king of the universe. As king of the universe, he called himself. Go ahead. Cyrus proclaimed peace for all. Uh-huh. In 537, he permitted 40,000 captive Jews to return to Palestine. Not only did he permit it, he told them to go because God had told him to build his temple. And so the Jews had a more accurate account, but the Greeks, this is Greeks history here. I mean, it's a, a Persian history here, which is recording. Cyrus led 40,000 Jews, but we know it, but we know it was 40,360 go back to Judea to build a temple. This is recorded in history, sisters and brothers, because the Lord said they was going to do it. But who were they led by? Zerubbabel. Let's go into the third chapter of Ezra. Ezra, the third chapter. And we're going to read verse 8. Ezra 3 and verse 8. Go ahead and read. Now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem, uh -huh. in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetil, and Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity into Jerusalem. Go ahead. And appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forth the work of the house of the Lord. Now skip down to verse t uh, 10 and go ahead. And they set forth the work of the house of the Lord. Now they start to build it. Go ahead and read. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, uh -huh. they set the priests in their apparel Go ahead. with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals Go ahead. to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Uh -huh. And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, Go ahead. because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. Uh -huh. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Now, Zerubbabel was the one that led this restoration, this rebuilding of the temple. Now, when they raised, when they laid the temple, they had great rejoicing over it, sisters and brothers. Now, let's go into Haggai. The second chapter. Haggai is between uh, uh, Zephaniah and Zechariah. Just so you know, because that little book is hard to find sometimes. It sure is. So you get to Zechariah, go back. <laughs> or if you're in Zephaniah, go forward. It's between the two books. Haggai, the second chapter. Whew. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Haggai, the second chapter. Like I said, it's between Zephaniah and Zechariah. Zechariah is the second to the last book in the Old Testament. You got Malachi, you got Zechariah, and you got Haggai. Haggai 2 and 1. Okay, read. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, uh -huh. came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Go ahead. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Go ahead. Who is left among you that saw the house in the, saw this house in her first glory? Uh-huh. And how do you see it now? Go ahead. Is it, is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Look, we ain't going to read it all, but some of the old people that saw Solomon's temple and saw what Zerubbabel them built, they cry because there's nothing compared to them. But the Lord said, Still, I'm with you. Go ahead and read. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. Uh-huh. And be strong, O Joshua, Go ahead. son of Josedek, Go ahead. the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord, and work. Go ahead. For I am with you, said the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt. Go ahead. So my spirit remaineth among you, Fear ye not. He said, now I want you to be strong, even though this house is nothing compared to Solomon's house. But still be strong and work. I am with you as I was with them when I brought you out of Egypt. And my spirit, that's that angel that I sent before you, he is still among you. So I want you to be strong and work. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20. And go ahead. 
And again, the word of the Lord came into Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Uh huh. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, Go ahead. I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. Now he let me say, I want you to tell Zerubbabel this now. This I'm directly to him. I'm going to shake the heaven and the earth. The book that lets you know he ain't going to do that until he get ready, until he come the last time. I'm going to shake the heaven and the earth. And, I will and I'm going to overthrow thrones of kingdoms. Go ahead and read. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I'm going to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. Go ahead and read. And I will overthrow the chariots uh -huh. and those that ride in them. Go ahead. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Go ahead. Every one by the sword of his brother. Go ahead. In that day, said the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant. In that day will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant. Go ahead. The son of Sheatel, said the Lord, uh -huh. and will make thee as a signet. For I have chosen thee, said the Lord of hosts. He said, now look, I'm going to take you, Zerubbabel, and I'm going to make you my signet. You're going to be my sign because I have chosen you said the Lord. But it was the rule bell that's dead. The nations didn't come down. They were still ruling. Mm -hmm. But he is talking future. He said, I have chosen you. So what did he choose him to do? Let's go right on over to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. You're right there next to it. Let's turn toward the uh, last, going toward Revelation, Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse one, because we're going to show you the, you know, the Lord's throne room. And then we're going to get down to it, four and one. Go ahead and read. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep. Uh-huh. And said unto me, what seest thou? Go ahead. And I said, I have looked. And behold, a candlestick all of gold uh -huh. with a bowl upon the top of it. Go ahead. And its seven lamps thereon. Uh -huh. And seven pipes of the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. Look, he saw in the gold in, in the room, he saw the Lord, and he saw them seven, seven angels, which are seven spirits, also called seven lamps. But skip now to verse 6. I just want to let you know this is all future here. But they was mentioned back here. Go ahead and read. Did verse 6. Go ahead. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, Uh huh. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. This saying, is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, uh huh, nor by power. Go ahead. But by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. Who art thou, O great mountain? Uh huh. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Is I'm gonna, uh, whatever the government is, become. I'm gonna knock you down. Zerubbabel, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Go ahead and read. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof uh -huh. with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. And the headstone of what? The headstone of the temple, sisters and brothers. Shouting grace, grace. Go ahead and read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Uh huh. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. The hands of Zerubbabel? have laid the foundation of his house. We read that, didn't we? That's right. Go ahead and read. His hands shall also finish it. His hands shall also finish it. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto go, you. Go ahead. For he has despised, for who has despised the day of small things? Go ahead. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now, Zerubbabel is the one that laid the foundation of the earth. Zerubbabel is going to, uh, of the, of the uh, 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 temple, and Zerubbabel is going to finish it. What? The temple that Jesus is going to dwell in, sister and brother. Zerubbabel is dead. So in order for that to happen, Zerubbabel have to be raised from the dead. So that's who's going to build that temple. When Jesus come up out of the wilderness and come by way of that east gate and go into that temple, it's going to be there. But who's going to build it? Immortals. Not mortal men, sisters and brother. And I bet you that's going to outshine Solomon's temple. Just like the people cried when they saw the temple at Zerubbabel and built then. That's right. Compared to Solomon's temple, when they look at that, so Solomon's temple is going to be slack. Because Immortal is going to build that temple, sisters and brothers. And 
Rubabel is the one that's going to lead the project. Now let's go back to Ezekiel, the 44th chapter. Because the Lord have it all laid out, sisters and brothers. I had to say it had to be some kind of edifice that the Lord himself is going to live in because the Lord likes perfection. He wants everything in order. And only immortals can put it the way he wanted, it, sister and brother. So that's who's going to build it, immortals. Zerubbabel and whoever it is that come with it. In the first resurrection, probably the same one that helped them build it then, sister and brother. So now, we know that Zerubbabel is going to build that temple. Ezekiel 44 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east. Go ahead. And it was shut. Uh huh. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. Go ahead. It shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered in by it. Uh huh. Therefore it shall be shut. Now, when the Lord came and he brought his people out of the wilderness, then they shut that east gate. And said, I don't want no man to come through that gate because the God of Israel came through the gate. He's on earth now at this time, sister and brother. And you got spirit beings, the people in the first resurrection. You got the other two thirds of the angels going to be on this earth. And you got flesh and blood people going to be on this earth. There's going to be a whole lot of activity going on in this earth at that time, sister and brother. Because every living being in the creation from the angels to man and beasts going to be on this earth. Boy, that's going to be a glorious time. Mm. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 3. Uh-huh. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. I don't know who that prince is, so don't ask me. Go ahead and read. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate uh -huh. and shall go out by the way of the same. Go ahead. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. Now he brought him the way of the north way before the house. Go ahead and read. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Uh -huh. And I fell upon my face. See, didn't Ezekiel saw him go in it, didn't he? So now the glory of the Lord didn't fill the house. Jesus, so he fell on his face. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark uh -huh. well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And all the laws thereof. Uh -huh. And mark well the entering in of the house. Go ahead. With every going forth of the sanctuary. He said, I want you to mark all this down, because I want all Israel to know, Ezekiel, what is going to happen in the future and how they have to behave when this house is built, I want you to write it all down because this is for the eyes of the people that's going to come in the future. I want you to tell them about the house because I'm going to have all of our prophets tell them about the saints and what their jobs are going to be. Now let's go and seek some of these out. Let's, because after this was done, Israel have never had a king since after Israel fell in the days of Ezekiel, because Ezekiel wrote this prophecy as a captive sister and brother. Israel was in captivity. So now, it couldn't be talking about what's going to happen, what happened then, because the Lord had destroyed Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar had broke down the temple. He didn't broke down the walls of the temple. Jerusalem was there. If the Jews was there, I mean, so Jerusalem was destroyed, and they would not go back until Ezra let that amount go back. Then after that, Jesus came, that was destroyed. So all of this is future. And the Lord lets you know, until he come, we ain't going to have no king. Let's go into Hosea, the third chapter. Hosea, chapter three. That's why people tell me, well, you know, you get somebody going to lead us back to the promised land. Look. Ain't nobody going to lead you nowhere. You go over there, you're going to be messed up. You're going to be in trouble. Like the people that went a while back, back in the 60s. They're in trouble. Children raise up, they don't know what to do. They are victims, sisters and brothers. Because the Lord gave you specific orders that look. You ain't going to have no king for a long time. And when you have a king, I'm going to show you who he's going to be. Hosea 3 and verse 1. 
Hosea 3 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend. Go ahead. Yet an adulteress, uh -huh. according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, uh -huh. who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. He said, I want you to go and, my, and, and, and marry, uh, uh, I want you to get you uh, 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 a uh, harlot, an adulterous woman. You understand? Because <laughs> just like Jesus, just like Israel is, Israel is an adulterous people. We love everybody's girl, God, and we love flaggers of wine and whiskey <laughs> and whatever you can smoke too. <laughs> we love everything to get you off base. Go ahead and read. So I brought, so I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver, uh -huh. and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Go ahead. And I said unto her, Thou should abide for me. Many days, uh -huh. thou should not play the harlot, and thou should not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. He's now he bought her, and he told his harlot woman, look, I want you to wait for me. Don't be for no other man. I don't want you to play the harlot, harlot with nobody else, because he used the woman as he used Israel. And I hope the woman listened to him better than Israel. Because we done paid the holler with every pagan god on the planet. We're dealing with the sun god. You name it. Egyptologists dealing with Ra. You understand? And you think that's something. You're dealing with that other Jesus. You know, the one that, that represents Mithra. Not the one that's in this Bible. And I can go on and on and on. He said, now I don't want you to play the holler now. Because it's going to be, and I want you to wait for me. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. And without a prince. Without a prince. And without a sacrifice. And without a sacrifice. And without an image. Uh-huh. And without an ephod. And without teraphim. That ephod is a priest garment. And the teraphim is a cherubim because we use them when they, when they built the temple. Around the walls of the temple, you had a cherubim and a palm tree, a cherubim and a palm tree. These are our symbols. And even when they had the veil that, that uh, uh, separated the holy from the most holy place, had cherubim and palm tree, cherubim and palm tree. But we, we have, so we don't have any other sign. We don't have no kings. We don't have no prince. We don't have no symbols that represent us. That star David don't belong to us, sister and brother. That's the star of Rembrandt. So we have none. And we won't have any for many days. That's why when you get brothers running around Israel, Israel run, this is Prince so-and-so, so-and-so, and Prince so-and-so. Where is your sovereign country? <laughs> How can you be a prince without a country? We don't have none. Right. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 5. Go ahead. Afterward shall the children of Israel return. And afterward shall the children of Israel return. Go ahead and read. And seek the Lord their God. And seek the Lord their God. And David their king. And David their king. And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And that's when you're going to fear him in the last day. But you're going to seek, we're going to return and we're going to seek the Lord our God and David their king. Why are you going to seek David? David is dead. But let's go why we're going to see, and see why we're going to see, uh, seek him. Let's go into 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Because sisters and brothers, we don't understand what's going on. Israel running around trying to show that, well, I'm an Israelite. And I'm going to dress so even if I don't open my mouth, you're going to know who I am. It is nice, whatever you're trying to do. But if you don't get salvation, all that is an exercise in futility. We ain't about just being Israel. We're about salvation. We're about becoming God. You can be Israel. I choose God. It's all that simple. First Chronicles 28 chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 2. 28. Which verse? I mean, which chapter? First Chronicles chapter 28. Oh, okay. 
And verse 2. Okay, go ahead. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said. This is when David got ready, wanted to build a temple. He had all of the elders of Israel around, all the people around, all the dignitaries in Israel. And then he got up and he spoke to him and he said, go ahead and read. Hear me, my brethren uh -huh. and my people. Go ahead. As for me, I had in mind hard to build a house of rest go ahead. for the ark of the covenant of the Lord uh -huh. and for the footstool of our God. Go ahead. And had made ready for the building. Look, David wanted to build a temple. He had it in his heart. The Lord had shown him how to do it. And when he got up to do it, he told him, no, I don't want you to do it. But David had gotten everything together. Solomon didn't have to worry about bringing bricks and nails and whatever. David had it all compiled. Go ahead and read. But God said unto me, Go ahead. Thou shalt not build a house for my name. Uh-huh. Because thou hast been a man of war. Uh-huh. And hast shed blood. He said, look, man, you done been a war and you done killed too many people. So I don't want you to build a house. Go ahead and read. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father, to be king over Israel forever. He said, but however, he chose me to be king over Israel forever. How long is that, sister and brother? Long time. If you chose to be king forever, then how long must you live? Go ahead and read. For he has chosen Judah to be the ruler, uh -huh. and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. So now David is going to be king over Israel even when he come back. That's why Jesus is called Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. So we know David's spot, know his job. When the Lord bring Israel back after the first resurrection, he's going to put people to rule his whole life. But now David is going to be ruler over king over Israel. Even Jesus is going to be king over Israel, David's going to be king unto him, sister and brother. That's why he said forever, because he's going to raise it from the dead. That's why Jose said, the people going to, we're going to dwell many days without a king and a priest and an image. But then the Lord is going to return to Israel, and we're going to return, and we're going to seek the Lord and David, our king, because the Lord is going to raise David. He's going to be in the first resurrection, and he is going to be king over all Israel. Not over all earth. The Lord is going to be king over all earth. Thank you for tuning in to today's lesson. If you are in the Chicagoland area, we welcome you to join our church community every Saturday at 12 noon central. We are located at 520 West 138th Street in Riverdale, Illinois. Our ministry is made possible by your donations. To make a donation or to view all of our locations across the world, please visit our website at www.theisraelofgod.com.